This is 99% Invisible. I'm Roman Mars. So this is a little bonus episode of 99% Invisible, and one of the big things we did this year was we released a brand new show inside of a show (laughs) created and hosted and conceived and reported by Avery Truffleman, who is here with me in the studio. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) And what I want to talk to you about is uh, this was... A phenomenon. It was called the fourth best podcast of the year, according to the New Yorker. And so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the making of it and what you learned in the, in the process of it, both in terms of the production of it as a, as a show, as a piece of entertainment and, and information, but also like personally how it affected your view of clothing, your view of style, all that sort of thing. So first, what was it like to have the show within a show and how did it feel to be out there as the host. What was that like? Oh, it's so scary. I don't know how you do it. <laughs> <laughs> it is scary, isn't it's, it? It's really scary to have your 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 voice out there, especially you, in this realm where I, I didn't know anything about it before. Right. And yeah, there was just so much to synthesize in this series. Right. I've been working there on was. it for so long. Yeah. I, I, I learned so much and it really changed the way I dress and the way I shop entirely. Oh, that's amazing. So what do you mean by that? The funny thing is, I think going into this series, I was like, I am a clothes person. I am a person who loves clothes. Mm -hmm. And then after reporting the series, I am a person who hates clothes. (laughs) And I am a person. (laughs) (laughs) No, 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 no. I'm a person who loves style and I love fashion. Yeah. But clothes are tricky. Okay, so explain the nuance here that you're speaking of. So as we learned in episode number five of Articles of Interest about Mm -hmm. denim, the process of making clothes, any kind of clothes, is really wasteful. It's pretty shocking. And we live in a world where it is so easy to just buy new clothes. Mm -hmm. And that's what I used to do all the time, not even thinking about it. I think a lot of people who don't consider themselves big shoppers just, you know, here and there occasionally just impulsively buy things Mm -hmm. from the Internet, from a store. And maybe sometimes it fits and sometimes it's your style and sometimes it's not. And whatever, then you donate it to the Goodwill and that's good for the Goodwill. And that is totally how I lived. Right. Um, you're, like, it, you're like absolved from the consumerism because you know you're going to donate it and clothes are these eminently donatable objects. But that's not enough. It's no, no, because it, <laughs> it's really most clothes end up in landfill anyway. Mm-hmm. And Goodwill and Salvation Army, these amazing organizations, provide this like virtuous outlet for us to just continue getting rid of clothes and buying new stuff all the time. And we're in this cycle of like, buy, donate, buy, donate, buy, donate, buy, donate, which, you know, it's good to donate your clothes, but it's not the solution for overconsumption. Right. And clothes contribute to 8% of all CO2 emissions in the world. And that's huge. That's Mm -hmm. a huge output. And we are just consuming too many new things. And so every designer I talk to is like thinking about this, concerned about this, worried about this. And... So many people were just like, you need to stop buying Mm -hmm. clothes. Yeah. Even the people who make the clothes. Yes. Vivian Westwood herself has this whole campaign. She has these shirts that say, buy less on them. (laughs) I don't know if she's selling them or not. But on her Twitter, there's a video where she's like, I'm making this new collection. But you have got to help because you mustn't buy my clothes. Stop. Buy less. Like, don't buy clothes. (laughs) Uh, that's the tricky thing. As someone who loves fashion and loves style, it's extremely hard to be like, stop buying. Mm -hmm. Because it's a really important form of self-expression. And as you grow and as you change and as your entire body completely regenerates on a cellular level every 14 years, (laughs) you need to find new ways to express yourself. And the world around you is changing and the weather is changing. Like, you can't not wear new things. Yeah. So I, how did you stop the cycle of um, buying and giving away and buying and giving away? Ironically, my style really pared down in the course of reporting for all of this because I was traveling so much. I lived out of a backpack and right. I had a uniform. Right. I wore these black overalls and a blue shirt every day. And it was extremely <laughs> embarrassing because I was interviewing these 
fashion designers, totally. consultants, you know, mm. and I was this unshowered mess in these clothes that I've been wearing over and over again. <laughs> and I recommend everyone do this. It was like going on a fast yeah. where I just had this one outfit and then I got back to Oakland and suddenly looked at my now enormous seeming closet. I guess I was just so overwhelmed by the number of clothes I had. I was like, this is a wonderland and I could just play in this forever. Oh, so you're saying that like it actually helped you not consume or buy new clothes because they were new to you. Because they were new to me and I hadn't worn them in like a month. Totally. And actually, oh, this amazing producer, Eleanor Kagan, has this great little game she likes to play called the Pantone Challenge. She had bought a book of Pantone color wheels Mm -hmm. and she'll go to her closet and try to pick out outfits based on color wheel combinations (laughs) just to help her like (laughs) rifle around and dig out new things. So there are all these ways of like appreciating what you already have. Yeah. But, you know, you. but that's the thing. You're never, you will change. Your body changes. Sure. You change. Attitudes change. And style is a thing. I used to have this idea. I used to think I was immune to fashion. Mm-hmm. And I used to think that fashion people, like, get Vogue magazine and obey it like it's the Bible. Mm-hmm. And when Vogue says polka dots are in, like, you go out and you buy polka dots and you throw out your stripes. <laughs> and that's not how fashion works. We all pay attention to fashion. But the way it manifests is not from this ruling that comes down from on high it's just when you look in your closet and you think i have nothing to wear Mm -hmm. or when you see someone wearing something new and you're like that looks kind of interesting yeah i mean even in the hawaiian shirts episode they were talking about how the cuts of hawaiian shirts have changed how the collars were pointed in the 70s and now you know they were like kind of boxier in the 90s and they're a little tighter now like fashions change they just do and we all obey them right but the thing is It's so easy to just scratch that itch right now, to like see a new style and be like, I'm going to go online and just get it. And you can really easily. And this was the trap that I had kept falling into over and over again. And the person who changed my life in this regard, I I went to a panel about sustainability just to do some research. This fashion consultant named Annie Gullingsrud. My name is Annie Gullingsrud, and I'm a fashion industry consultant. And she was like, you know, look, People say, stop buying. It's really hard to just quit. Instead of to shame someone and be like, stop buying, don't even buy. A way to sort of circumvent that, that, I guess, that addiction or that pull is to buy something that's used. There is this whole new market out there of secondhand clothes. The research is saying that we discard before a year is up. We buy, and then before a year is up, we discard it. There's this world of, like, new-looking clothes. It's, like, barely used. It's not used. They don't smell like mothballs. They don't have stains on them. (laughs) And there are these websites that you can go to. ThreadUp. Poshmark is another one. The Real Real is another one. You can shop on them, like, as though they are new clothes. You search for your size. You can look for your color. You can look for the price range. And you can just kind of scratch that itch. Right. That right. need to like scroll and look and see what's out there. Find the brands that you would typically buy. Just go on the resale platforms and buy them there instead. When I see something that I like, I just check one of these secondhand stores to see right. if they have it instead. And this is not a way of buying less, but it is a way of not buying any new material. Mm-hmm. And it's also a way of really interrogating what I buy instead of just impulsively clicking. Mm-hmm. It just helps me go, wait a minute. And it helps me realize, do I really want it? If I do, let's look. And it's not even like digging through uh, bins at the Goodwill. Mm -hmm. It's not that involved. It's one, you know, one or two searches. And it's helping me kind of wean myself off the habit of just impulsively buying new things. So you can begin to pare down your consumption by buying secondhand, and then you can also donate secondhand. And then that sort of creates a little bit more time between a thing being made and a thing being put into a landfill. Totally. So if you were not going to spend all your money on new clothes, what would you spend your money on, Avery Truffman? <laughs> what I always spend my money on, Roman Mars. <laughs> podcasts. I, yeah, you, you donate to the podcast that you love the most, right? Uh, also to the podcast that I work for. I actually donate to the podcast I that do. I work for. I know you do. It's so sweet. But um, it's the best. Radiotopia is the best. Totally. And also, you know, like if you're going to, you know, go out in the world and 
uh, consume thoughtfully. Uh, you should know things, and that's a lot of what we do here, not just in Articles of Interest, but it's what we do at 99% Invisible. And it's a, a thing that is uh, quite virtuous. It doesn't use a lot of uh, uh, carbon resources. I don't know what the carbon footprint of podcasts are. That would be interesting. <laughs> it's not 8%. <laughs> um, so whatever you would spend the next time you're on some site for buying a piece of clothing, just like, say, Okay, I'm not going to buy it right now. I'm going to take that amount of money. I'm going to fill it in. I'm going to go to radiotopia.fm. I'm going to hit the donate button. I'm going to fill in that amount. That's a great idea. And, and then you will save the world a little bit. You'll add more beauty and culture and cool things to the world. And also know that when we do things, the reason why we can do experiments and why we're able to grow and create new shows and create articles of interest and why we can experiment is we have this baseline of support from our listeners. So if you want to be a part of that, then you can go to radiotopia.fm and click donate. Yes. And so that would be nice. All right. Thanks, Avery. That's great. Thanks, Roman. (laughs) 